Hello, Hello everybody, everybody, and welcome, welcome to Artist, Wife, Wife Writer, Writer, Husband Podcast, Podcast. starring Hi. me, Artist, Wife, Midnight, and me, Writer, Husband, Nell. And guess who we got back here today, boy? After two episodes, we have the Notorious. MDC. I thought you said your own name. You didn't say it. I mean, first of all, I was late. Y'all been psyched. Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, we Bro, have. I was so freaking psyched. Like, I was like, yo. We I got to call it out. We did it. We did it. One, one take. It. One, take. <laughs> one take. We did it. Oh, wait, yo. it two episodes? Yeah. Yes, it's been two episodes since the last time you joined us. How you been? Yeah, how was the vacation? Well, <laughs> I mean, haven't seen you in the office for a while. It's been a month. Must have been a nice break. No, no, it's been like two weeks. You know, considering that I worked this stupid day job without him, this is more exciting, right? Oh, damn. You're right, though. <laughs> damn. damn. <laughs> My bad, homie. <laughs> Free vacation. Uh, actually, this has been an interesting, interesting... Time away, I guess you could say. Not not because of my time away, but things have happened. And it, it, they actually do con- uh, pertain to a, su- uh, a subject matter, excuse me. Oh, cool. So, yeah, I, I just can't wait to get into this. What's the subject for tonight, Nev? Yeah, so um, basically I wanted to start this off. Do we normally name the topic? Yeah, sometimes. Oh, oh I just like to get into it. Oh. Um, yeah, when would you? I feel like it would be That's more appropriate that you lead us off. Okay. Tonight, well, you know, you're suffering from what we're about to talk about. Well, suffering, suffering. is an interesting. Don't all artists <laughs> suffer for their art? Um, Not the rich one. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, I don't know. But, well, Not the pretty one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't agree with you on it. Um, uh, feeding the creative well. Or. Or also, how to get over an art block. How to feed that well and get your art back on track. Yes. And as so, Nefa said, I, I've been suffering from it. I've hit a... I'm currently climbing a wall. I'm not going to say I hit a wall. I hit the wall a while ago. I'm climbing the wall right now. Okay, so when you say you hit the wall, like, you mean... Like, what, is, what does that mean? Is That doesn't, can't be the same as... MDC did not lock my door. Um, <laughs> that can't... <laughs> That can't be the same as um, <laughs> like hitting the ceiling, right? You're not saying like you've reached all you're going to reach as a <laughs> artist. No, right? no, 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 no. Oh, I was like hit the wall. I mean, I hit like the art block wall. You know, I um, I overworked myself. I think we discussed about all the you know work working towards a business becoming. Well, we haven't really, but I've been working on branding with Neff. We've been working with other amazing creatives, getting our website together, business cards, logos, business registration. Plans for the year, 2020, you know, 2020 or bust. And I have also been working on big commissions, uh, my drawing stuff for it, and finding inspiration for Black History Month. I, uh, you know, was working on ideas that I had that I had to hit, go on the back burner because I was swamped by a lot of stuff. And as usual for me, if things start to feel a little bit too much like work, I tend to start going into a hole and start digging down. I kind of lose feeling with stuff, even though I want to feel it. And I'm stretching out to feel it. (laughs) I knew you were about to sing. I saw your face. (laughs) Yes, that. And it's not, it's not saying, you, you, you. I want to say that I wasn't, it's not that I wasn't enjoying myself, but when things start to get overwhelming, which it was, um, and then I start doubting myself. Is this the right path? Am I moving quick enough? Am I moving too fast? All that stuff eats at my creativity. And so I sit there and I'm just like, wow, it's been a week. I haven't drawn really anything that's uh, I'm supposed to draw. So, yeah, that's 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 what I hit the wall. But I've been climbing over. I'm not over. I'm still trying to climb to the top. I refuse to let the wall be where I stop. Yeah. I don't stop. When I hit the wall, I fall back, stumble a little bit, just do a running jump and just... Yeah, yeah, just just run, jump at the highest part you can go, and just, yeah, <laughs> just yeah, yeah. I mean, well, not literally, but in the sense that she's a Mongol trying to jump the wall of China. Yeah, it's the Huns. Yeah, we we not feel in for this you. Podcast. Yeah, you know, we were in solidarity and whatnot. But <laughs> <laughs> so, 
uh, yeah, that's where I've at. I've been at, and I've had to figure out, as usual, for myself, how to prevent burnout while continuing to feed the well. And I normally feed the well with art, so it's like. I do feed with bodies. Yeah, that's a way to feed it too. Do you use them to climb on top of and jump out of the well, or? If I fall, then. Oh, so you're not really so in the well. Have to be like draw a line and start and just fall into the well and start to the well. Well, if you're dancing on top of the well, like near the rim of it. You gotta glow? Glow. Yeah, you're right. You gotta lean over it a little bit. So. Ah, ha, ha, you're dead. And I'm, oh, shit. <laughs> you gotta, you know. So, is this when was the last time y'all seen a well? Oh, man. I don't even know. Oh, have I ever? Oh, I have seen a well. Remember at the, the remember we used to go hang out at the graveyard? Yeah. Dude, I missed that. Remember that? Like, Wait, was that a real well? I don't know if it was, but it looked like one. It was pretty old and authentic. I forgot about that well. Holy crap. Actually, funny story. Someone was like, is uh, one of the writer groups I'm in? So, I mean, uh, someone was like, is a graveyard a good first date for a goth? And everybody in the comments was like, it's a good first date for anybody. But, you know, I'm just like, hey, it's a good place to hang out, period. You know, I actually hate just don't, you know, just I don't know if it respect would, the dead. For a least. date, though, yeah. Uh, don't I'm eat not going to say stones. any names, but uh, I remember one time when we did go out to the graveyard, you know, a few years back. And, uh, you know, it was a group of us. Usual. And, you know, I just happened to look back, and uh, two two people that just uh, recently started dating, you know, they were sucking faces <laughs> behind us. And I'm just like, uh, you nasty. Yeah. <laughs> Around this grave dirt, memories, and come on, come on. Like, that's that's the last place. Well, you and then we saw that weird-ass light that shot up. They made like a right angle, yes. and that person didn't see it because they were sucking face. Because, they weren't yeah. sucking face at the time, but they didn't deserve to see it because they had disrespected <laughs> the dead. <laughs> Remember when we were sure we saw somebody in that house? <laughs> you know, weird things have happened in that darn cemetery with people. I will never forget the day when someone we knew got a scar on his leg randomly because he kept acting a fool. Yeah, I remember y'all yeah, hearing that. On my freaking hood. Mayo jar inside of that house, brand new looking, but the house inside looked old as mess. Remember the mayo jar? It was a, well, I don't sorry, know what, what we weren't sure what it was, a, but there was a brand new mayo jar in the like that. I guess who, like, who would you're you say like mayonnaise? Yeah, mayonnaise. The instrument. N- instrument. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, is that a SpongeBob? <laughs> <laughs> is, is you oldish. <laughs> No, Patrick, mayonnaise is not an instrument. I legit didn't get that. <laughs> no, yeah, mayonnaise. me and my brother, like, I, what's the name of, it was like the, the, the gravekeeper. Well, I guess he was at I'm one sorry, point. I'm sorry, y'all ever actually, Never met him. Okay. I'm, but it was a house oh, 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 I thought you were that like, was, what there. was his actual name? No, sorry, sorry. Uh, but, you know, the house, when you go, in, certain parts where you go in, there's like this old, decrepit house. The, 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 there's no door, but they have like the bars there. Yeah, so yeah. we would always go back there and just peek in and pretend to see ghosts. And then, like, one time we just saw a mayonnaise jar just sitting there. And just, like, there was no mayonnaise jar on the table. Because you can see the dining room table right there. There was no. There was a decrepit-looking yeah, broken table. I'm so mad. Y'all always do the most fun things without me. <laughs> the whole time I went to the cemetery. I'm the only person that went to the cemetery by myself at night. I would that never. Food went in that house without me. I'm mad. Well, we didn't go inside, but we got yeah, really close to the gate out. and just don't, peeked. Don't. Uh, one of us, I think, uh, the the two dumb ones, what? they slipped through the the gate a little bit. There was more than just one. Oh, we were all there. I didn't go in. Oh, you didn't. Oh no, I didn't go in. <laughs> I saw that managed jar. I'm just like, I don't know if anybody can get in here. This is like a whole chain and lock rusted. Don't look like nobody used it. But I mean, mm. yeah, it's the mystery of the man is there. Yeah, I have a th- I have an issue with people trying to pan into the dark shit sometimes. Oh yeah, dude, I'm definitely. Like, you know, if, if it's in you, you're in it. You don't need to go to the cemetery to get an answer, even though it's really dark. You go anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To be honest, it's funny because like uh, my, uh, my, the, my my last weekend, I did get invited to a Johnson thing out in Baltimore, and I was a guest. I got in for free. Oh, nice! And what? Really, the only subject that whole ride there and while I was there was y'all this, y'all that, which I was cool with because the the other guy. Because I'm pretty freaking goth. <laughs> like you mean in the sense of like the the driver was asking you questions. We were just discussing things, and she was, she was talking about this cringe mofo on YouTube. I'm never going to watch, but it's funny. Nice to ignore. Mm-hmm. You know, and, but I know the, the person, uh, her friend, because they're, they're um, a 
trying to sell out one thing quick. I ain't all that dangerous. But long story short, he was he was a photographer back in the day with Bat Cave and stuff. If y'all know what Bat Cave was, that was a popular golf club that was using in like the eighties when golf was like officially out there, you know? Uh huh. So uh-huh. he actually knew like a lot of people like he was like Susan the Banshee when she got married. Mm. Uh, he was at her wedding. What? Robert Smith and Kid was there, Jason Boyd was there. Um, a couple of other people there, and he told me this funny story about how Robert Smith was making fun of Andrew Eldritch and Sister the Mercy about not being golf. <laughs> but for no reason at all, Robert stood up and said, I'm golf, and everyone bust out laughing. <laughs> and then Susie, 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 and the bank came over like, what is so funny? And so I think Rob, no, David Bowie, David told her, and she just kind of looked at them and just walked away, as Janet would, because that's a real name. <laughs> and that made me really laugh because all Why would everybody laugh at him? <laughs> well, because see, the thing about Andrew Eldridge, he see, the thing about Robert Smith, Susie Sue, and Andrew Eldridge from all like the pioneer and iconic golf fans, none yeah. of them call themselves golf. But Andrew Eldridge really came out and said it, so Robert Smith was basically making fun of him by saying that he was golf. Oh, I know that makes sense, yeah. And that's that's like the point we're saying. Yeah, you're mm-hmm. not truly golf until you're not golf. Yeah, you did. <laughs> So I wanted to ask you, like we were at a party and somebody, one of um, one of the people at the party at my uh, sister-in-law's house was like, they turned to her and was like, are you goth? And she just looked at her and I was just like, oh, I'm not, I don't want to answer this. And with the kindest voice you could see, you could see the like strained rage. I don't consider myself goth. I like the aesthetic. And I'm just like, okay, you can go ahead and educate. I wasn't going to. Is this the sister I'm thinking of? Is this the sister you're thinking of? Sister-in-law you're thinking of? Oh, in law. Yeah, in law. Oh, okay. Yeah, my brothers. Hold up. No, no, they're not. She's just trying to. They're not actually married. No. Yeah, sorry. I just I don't know what no, to call no, them. I just, but, oh, brothers, girlfriend. No. I no. just. Yeah. Sorry, no, habit. Yeah. It's just no. It's so. It, never mind. Yeah. I mean, I'm about to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just like, but like, I don't consider myself. But that's such a question that I constantly hear. Ask anybody who's wearing all black. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> sorry. Oh, we got completely off traf- topic. Oh my Jesus! <laughs> so, what? What were you saying? Oh, good, 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 good. Um. <laughs> yeah, I totally. Oh, I was sorry. We, we, well we did. I don't know how we got from that. So, how do you feel the well? Like, um, should I go first, or because I know I started talking first? Well, yeah. Like, go I wanted Robin. you to go first. Oh, my bad. Okay. You said that you're uh, suffering. Well, um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said that you're going through a creative block or you just went through it. So what ways, like we, uh, like I understand that um, ways to prevent it, of course, is keeping the well full. So let's start off with that. How do you, how do you, you keep your uh, creative well full? So I think that's, that's pretty much what kept me from really taking it and just sitting out for a week. Because I haven't. Even though I said that for a week I wasn't doing too much, I was still creating. I was still working on the business. It's just that I had no room for something that is, well, the business is my personal thing, so I guess. But I, I didn't have room for commissions where usually the well commissions, uh, I, I pull from the well of creativity for commissions to keep me caring about it and loving it and love right. doing this. So do you feel like, well, I'm not trying to put you on the spot or no, anything. No, go ahead. But, um, well, no, I'm saying for like you're listening. Do you feel like um, sometimes you don't get excited for commissions? Oh, I mean, yeah, that's, I feel like that's but, like, a that's, normal That's feeling. like natural, right? Yeah, it's normal. There's sure, sometimes right. where it's just like, I really do enjoy oh. doing commissions, especially in the beginning. Right. But if a commission can tend to drag out for whatever reason have you, then I start to feel a little bit like, this is becoming work. And I think that's like a normal feeling. The, um, what I do to make sure that that isn't something that stays throughout the entire process mm-hmm. is that I pull from the well of creativity. For me, it's reading. I love reading. And I love reading Webtoon comics. It's like, if I ever was like, I have, I have so many Webtoon stories that I'm reading that are different genres entirely, from pure romance to supernatural horror to action adventure, to boy love, it matters not, I love it all. It's so it's like, if I'm working on a commission, let's say um, anything in general, just a slice of life, and I have to do this thing where I have to come up with some character designs, but I've done the character a couple of times now, and I'm not really feeling 
moving forward, but I have to because I've already done this much. I tend to stop real quick, give myself a small break, read for a se- read for a, read a chapter or two. Um, it really inspires me to want to create um, in general. You know, normally for myself, but I mean, right. I, but I, channel I feel it. like that's a big thing, itself, especially for sequential artists. Oh yeah, like because, and I think um, people who offer something like that, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. How should I say? People who offer something like that for commissions, but never got a, you know, they never got contacted. And when they do get that first commission, they, they, you have to put yourself in a position, I feel like, where you're going to be motivated to do this. Because I always feel like, you know, money is, is good, of course, receiving money, but it's not the biggest motivation as you would think it is for, for a lot of people, especially I feel like with artists, where, you know, we're more uh, we're more emotional than than uh, logical. Yeah, it's like logical. You know, they made the payment, so I gotta finish this. Yeah, but it's like when you do se- uh, sequential artwork, you literally find yourself draw um, drawing the same characters. Yes, over and over and over and over and over again. Right, because a comic page, it could you you could pay for what would be the price of one image. I got to draw five, possibly five, one time even, nine different scenes, one page. That's tiring. Nine different small individual scenes where the quality cannot drop. And I feel like the worst thing is when the stuff isn't making sense to you. Like uh, the script yeah. isn't making sense. But the... Which isn't always the case. Like the writer but. or the creator isn't really giving you much... Um, artistic freedom with it mm-hmm. so you're just drawing it and you're just like oh my god this doesn't this doesn't make any sense right where i sit there and i'm just like ah oh you know because we talked about it for our valentine's day special like i love working with you and there's a certain amount of like communication and leeway we give each other you know we, we work on each other with that right. but more often when i'm hired as uh, the when i'm when the client hires me to work on it Unless they explicitly state that they want me to help with the script and in planning scenes, I'm kind of just left reading the script and drawing it out. And a lot of times they already have it like thumbnailed out and everything in the sense of like the panel layout. So I'm just kind of like even less, uh, even less freedom. Because for me, a part of the process is the panel layout. I like right, where right. I read the script and I can see the scene in my head and the panel flows in that way. But when I'm kind of locked in, you can kind of pull at it a bit. So it's like. Yeah. Because even with me, with my writing, I pretty much, for certain scenes where I have, like, a a specific picture in my head, Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and write it out for you. But, um, like, actually telling you, like, the giving you the thumbnails, no, that's something I leave all up to you and whatnot. Because I feel like sometimes I add too many scripts, uh, sorry, too many panels, or maybe not enough panels or whatever. So I totally just want to... Leave it up to you to help me decide. Like, I feel like that can be a bit uh, constr- uh, restricted yeah. for for an artist. But, yeah. um, I mean, even, you know, they paid for it or they made a partial down payment or whatever. You yeah. Know, it's up to you. Well, now it's your job to deliver. Yeah. And I don't always have an issue. It's like, it's here and there. Uh, normally, for my commissions, I'm very happy throughout the process. Um I'm trying to dissect your words, so it's just like, if I don't have to try too hard to dissect it and where it's a very clear verbal communication or written communication, I prefer written communication because I can go back and look over your words instead of having to try to remember what you said. I can just see it again. So much easier for me, someone who, you know, I just, I prefer written communication a bit better. Um, but normally when a commission, even when a commission goes well and everything works out, my well does run out. I have to replenish it. And for me, it's with reading. Dystopian, YA novels, young adult, um, romance. My bookshelf is full of a bunch of like young adult fiction and art books and art books, young adult fiction. And adult fiction, right? I don't know, probably. I mean, what? Julia, oh, yeah, Stephen Julia King. Quinn and Stephen King is adult, right? Oh, yeah, I got a whole bottom layer that's like my romances. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, I mean, it's historical romance, Victorian era, so it's just like, well, not all of them, because I got the Princess and Bride right there, and I got different ones, too, so. 
Yeah, yeah. I got a lot to pull from. Sorry. I mean, your entire bookshelf, too. No, no. I was just, you were. Uh, you, Loud? No, you were looking away from the mic. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> I did turn my whole head. I should have moved my body. It's okay. <laughs> you, know, you just need to face the mic, and I just need Mr. Todd to uh, speak up a bit more. <laughs> there we go. Um, One of the things that also helps for me sometimes, not always, is, of course, anime and animated series. Uh, like, that really helps, too. But that is more for a personal thing. That's not doesn't go towards my commissions. Normally, if I'm watching animated series or animes is because I am looking for inspiration for something that I'm working on or like a better visual of something that I have in my head. Like, I think I could say she Shira, I love it. The new season was supposed to come out. I'm waiting for it. I don't know if it is, but season five. And it's actually one of the biggest inspirations for a style of a story that I want to go with. Right, yeah. That yeah. has the same target audience. So it's like, cool, I get a better idea of it. And I'm just so... Like, I really want to just fly off the handle and just go and work on it. But it's like, no, I have to ground myself. Just put it in the well and pull from it later. So that's for me. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's like. Keeping it, like, you know, reading webtoons in between work sometimes and watching stuff and reading other stuff. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, it seems like you're saying you dab into other people's material. Um, yeah. When you're kind of feeling down. Yeah. And whatnot. Yeah. It really helps, too. Sometimes to get out of your own... Oh, that's got to be what it is. Getting out of my own head. You know, seeing things from a different perspective. Yeah. Especially. That's like the whole... Uh, what we were talking about, uh, I think, in episode 10, about what inspires us. Oh, yeah. And whatnot. Like, just, just diving into that stuff. And... and Will I get a part I feel like not so much it has even just, like, you know, what inspires us, but, like, sometimes random stuff. Like, you might look at something random... That, you know, maybe a friend told you to check out or whatever or, you know, it's just on Netflix or whatever. And it's like one scene or something from it or one idea just have you like, um, hey, that's that's actually pretty cool. I might use that. Yeah, that, I, <laughs> I do might like use that. that for a scene or something. Right. Yeah, I could definitely, um, um, what's it called, that because generally speaking, I'm an information junkie. I just like knowing stuff. Knowledge is power. Yeah, pretty much. Like, pretty much. There's a story to everything. That's why, you know, some. This is the lowest common version of storytelling I would put out there. But there's a reason why people like Dark. Oh. <laughs> you know, because you want to know how it ends. It's like. True. Steve said, what? She did who? Like, you know. It's a form of storytelling. You know, so. And, and that's what keeps you going. And so if we talk about, like, things like. Even something like this Monday. Okay, my, my <laughs> <laughs> this is one of Neff's like, interests. Like, this is one of my interests. It's like something has mundane, has business. But come on, like, it is kind of like generally business. Like he could have said accountant, <laughs> bookkeeping, okay. I'm sorry. Wall I'm Street. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, 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 well, let me, let me, let me. <laughs> okay, let me let me let me think about this. Like I have no interest in sports whatsoever. Right. Okay. However, I remember years ago I was at a family reunion. They were watching like the top 100 players, quarterback, quarterback for something was uh -huh. playing football. That caught my attention because, for starters, I'm a sucker for variety. Like I like anything of a subject that has different versions of that same subject. You know, there's a reason why, you know, like I'm in the, like ancient warriors or like I have a, a, a like I research like games and whatnot because they're the same but they're all different. Yeah. And, you know, I have a thing about, like, variety. So, even though I'm not into football, it, out of all sports, it probably attracts me the most as long as things are uh, strategic and whatnot. But also, you know, just looking at this list that happened to be on TV of, like, all these 100 quarterbacks and how different their personalities were and all that made it really interesting to me, you know. And it's like, I'm not into football. It didn't get me into football. But just watching that in and of itself was like, Huh, this is cool. If I were to, as an artist, exaggerate this, I can make each and every one of these quarterbacks a freaking, like, class in, like, a six. Yeah, you know, like do enjoy the that. Thieves, the, 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 the speedy the boys. The, the tacticians, you know. And and so, yeah, and I, like I said, I'm an information junkie. Like, I stay watching. I, I literally um, have, like, I really look down, like, every 
channel on YouTube, I'm a regular on there. Nice. Because uh, the more the merrier, you know, the more I know. And as I say, everything has a story. It's like, you know, you might think something like politics is boring until you actually figure out how it works. It's like, holy crap. Everything's beginning to make sense. I hate it even more now. Yeah, I and hate now, it still, but at least I know. I understand why. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you bring up a good point, though, because it's like, I don't, I'm not really into wrestling. I mean, mm-hmm. I am and I'm not. Yeah. I was into wrestling when, you know, we were all, you know, getting new to what, WWF and like, you know, back in the, back then, like the 90s-ish. Yeah. yeah. And then moving away from it. But I got family members who are heavily into it. Mm-hmm. So I'll sit there with my brother and, you know, he invites us over to watch this thing with him. I have no interest whatsoever, really. I don't know. Well, no, I won't say that. I do have an interest. I'm going to be there. Yeah. I don't have an interest in trying to learn more about it, but I will happily listen to him tell me everything that's going on. Yeah. I like hearing it from him. I don't, you know, I just, watching it, I'm, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Same thing for another one of my friends that does a podcast um, or she does videos on it live. I don't know what she's talking about, but listening to it is nice. I kind of enjoy yeah, it. And definitely, like, like I, I can definitely relate to wrestling because I'm a big wrestling fan in general. Wrestling is honestly one of my biggest inspirations. Like, not even just necessary in fiction, but even in my just everyday life, I just find the idea, it, it's, it's, it's a very unique entertainment for me, you know, because it's yeah, like, I think that's the case, fiction, yeah. but it's kind of real, yeah. but it's live, so the characters, these I mean, these wrestlers are these characters, it's not like actors playing the characters necessarily, it's like, no, that's actually them doing all their own stunt work. Right, it's you their know? persona, <laughs> but also them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I always found it to be a really unique art form. And it's funny because, you know, wrestling's one of those things that gets heavily criticized by people on the outside. Yeah. And it's like, and it'll be easy to tell them, well, you just don't get it. But the pr- frankly, they're, they're, everything that exists, there's people that don't get it. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's just the thing about it. I always like to be a person that at the very least understands the uh, interest in things, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I bring this up because, like, one of the things I've really been heavily getting inspiration from is a SCP. Yeah, boy. Which is, um, if you, if you never heard, it's called Special Containment Procedure, or also Secure, Contain, Protect. Yeah. Protect. Which is, um, <laughs> protect you a, mean. A, a, a computer game about this, um, organization. You call it a computer game. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is a computer game. Oh, but I haven't heard anybody call these things computer games since like the early 2000s. My bad. Anna. I just discovered fire. <laughs> <laughs> you play it over there. You're, you're, you're a little thing, computer you game. That new thing, Stonehenge? I got the kids are into it. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Iron is the shit. <laughs> Go on. I'm sorry. Cold. Cold. We built this city. Oh. We built this city Here we go, on man. steam and coal. There we go. I know it's like <laughs> that was a hit on uh, archaeological historical jokes. <laughs> Facebook, because I do know what Facebook is, man. Oh no, I'm sorry. I just, just shit my MySpace. I mean, it is a computer game. You're not wrong. I'm gonna be check my MySpace. I miss MySpace. It didn't sell us out. It didn't. I get, I get, uh, yeah. it Someone's back. brought that up too. Huh? It came back. What? Yeah, it came back for a while. No one was feeling it, so I think it died out again. What? It did, like, it was completely different. It was. It really well, did it was. let you cold like they used to? Because that's what I liked about it. Nah. Nah. Just hiding the <laughs> music was, so people can't get rid of it. That sucks. But, um, but yeah, uh, so if you don't know anything about SCP, if you're a horror fan or, you know, you can have better taste in horror, I highly recommend it. That, uh, damn, just cutting. I am harsh on people. I, I dislike people. Yeah, that's so, true. That's all right. That's why we have you here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're the devil's advocate or just the one who hates people, but I am building my own infinity gauntlet. That's what I'm doing. Okay. So, <laughs> um, SCP, and it's not just purely okay. horror; it's just mostly horror. But basically, SCP is a, a game, or even a universe at this point. Yeah, pretty about much. About an organization called SCP who specialize in studying and containing and protecting hu- uh, humanity from a, a non- anomalies. These could be everything from like supernatural creatures to objects to even scenarios. So there's a lot of videos online about it, even ga- like gameplay videos. But I mostly just listen to the stories because you do understand these stories are written by members and fans of SCP through their actual websites and 
they come up with these stories either based off of pre-existing SCPs or they introduce new ones. And, and you know, they're number from like, you know, 001 to the squads that you go. It, this game, this whole thing is, can basically be endless. Yeah. Be uh, last I saw was at like 6,000, and I'm pretty sure that wasn't the last number. Oh, yeah. So it's like, and, and it catches my interest because it, cause it shows you how creative people can be. Because the main thing that makes F, uh, SCP great and interesting is how mysterious it is and how little is explained. All you know is that these things exist and they do these things. And I've been using that as inspiration because I've recently, in the last week or so, been trying to kind of put together my own kind of universes and really define the rules of them. So sometimes at, you know, at work, I'll just listen to these videos while I'm working and just get inspiration from it. And I'm like, okay, this is how this story is going. And I've been getting a lot of new ideas from that. And I've even de- been debating if I'm going to actually write a research for SCP. Oh, you should. That'd be really cool. You yeah. really spook some people, I hope you know. Oh, yeah. So, you know, and, and, and you know, that's just, you know, one of the ways I've tried to chase inspiration. Um, but like I said, it comes, you know, we talked about this before. It, it com- Inspiration comes from different directions. So, but to me, being inspired and being a funk are kind of two different things. Like, being in a funk, I've kind of, I don't know, I, I can't say I've been in a funk more so that I've had too much inspiration. Um, I mean, you can never have too much, but in the sense that I have not been able to really pin down where I'm going to start. Oh, because I thought you might mean that, yeah. Y- you know. 100% I know what you mean. My, you know, my primary is film, obviously, but, you know, making a film is not easy at all. It's not something you can do on your own, really. Um, then there's my payments, and I've really been... Good point. You kind of need actors for a film. I mean, it could be like a one-person film, but I mean, who can hold the camera while you're acting? Actually, actually it's just the actors because the actors make the damn movie. Okay, y'all not going to get this, but that has been a big thing in movie set memes on Facebook. It's been the oh, funniest God. inside joke in history. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> it, it's, it's funny as hell. So do you we feel like, you. okay, when you say like too much inspiration or whatever, like, you're saying, like, in the sense of um, there's too many things that you want to do. Like, there's so much you oh, want to do, and yes. you feel like there's not enough time. In the not day. enough time. Let me tell you, like, so th- th- let me explain exactly what I'm personally great at, right? So, number one for me is film. Mm-hmm. Then art. Then music. Then I also have uh, um, my African research. And I, I guess... I would say photography is next. Photography is like kind of photography is more like my. I uh, that's what you meant by art, to be honest. But I mean, you, you meant art as in like illustrating and painting. Yeah, like illustrating and painting. Yeah. You know, so you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be real. I'm, I'm I'm very the type of person that wants to do. I want to conquer everything. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like um, I definitely, you know, I get different inspirations from. And yeah. I often try to prioritize them. It's like, you know, film comes first, no doubt, but the film is a process. It's a grind to build a premium. And film oftentimes contributes to other arts because I know the next movie I probably do does, in fact, in, is going to involve actually a lot of artistic themes. But the thing about it, those, you know. Yeah, because um, SCP, that pertains to a uh, particular, like, universe of films or so. Yeah. Or it helps create, you know, so it's like, yeah. And, and honestly with me, I would say the, e- the easiest way to say that, I'm, the reason I'm probably most in a funk is I'm letting circumstances do dictate, uh, you know, my, my work process. Workflow, like, you know, yeah. Uh, work in this warehouse job that does not leave me a lot of free time. You know, I have my lunch break, but usually my lunch break, you know, it's like if I don't already have inspiration before then, I'm not going to get it while I'm at work. Yeah. You know? And I haven't really though. Yeah, it, it freaking sucks. And then it's like, oh, that's usually in midday. Midday and late night is one of my biggest ins- inspirations hit me. Midday, I'm at freaking work. Can't do nothing about it. You know, three in the morning isn't an ideal time <laughs> to be working on something. You know, mm-hmm. when I got to go back to that job the next day. So, 
that has definitely got to put me in a funk because, again, I'm away from home during the week, so it's not like I go home home like after work. I go to family's house. Uh, so, and you know, but, you know, but it's different there. I can't just, you know, start playing. <laughs> oh. So, you know, even though I'm like, you know, maybe I just need to bite the bullet and figure out how to change that. But, you know, the, the point is, I'm still very limited in, you know. Yeah, what can be. What can be done. And within the time frame. And the time sucks. It really freaking does. It does. Lately, but on the plus so side, we had a whole channel I've also here. been going to a lot of events that have been beneficial. So, on one hand, I'm going to, I'm meeting new people and whatnot, but at the same time, it's less time at home. <laughs> so. Is that adding to your well, meeting new people? It is, actually. It is. Especially this past week, it was just particularly great because I went to a, a gallery. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. A test gallery. gallery uh, saw one of my friends perform for the first time doing music, saw artwork, talked to the artist who did all the artwork. I met, um, actually, someone from one of my favorite bands, Fuji Corporation. That was awesome. Um, and, you know, and she, and, and the artist, Lisa Marie, I, her last name is skipping me right now. I think it was Gunderson. It was amazing. It was a great, it was an awesome last name. That's a pretty, yeah, that already sounds awesome. And, you know, <laughs> I got to talk to her, and, you know, and she really asked me, you know, why are you in the funk? And I was, like, explaining, and, you know, you know, you start writing down, like, what's some old things you want to paint and whatnot. I was like, you know, when I did do that, I did get more of it done. <laughs> so, like, maybe I just need to go back to doing that, you know? You, yeah, you know, did we talk about that? Journaling, right? I think we talked about it on uh, one of the other podcasts. We talked about journaling, recording down, like, making lists for yourself yeah. and writing. Um, you don't have to go so far as what Neff does, where he does the morning pages. But, um... Where you wake up and I guess you put down your first thoughts for the day. Well, morning pages, it, it kind of exists around like thoughts that I have going around and what happened the previous day. Um, it's like journaling, but you know you try to do it every morning, uh, normally before you start your day, and uh, you try to make it three pages. That's like the main thing about it. It it really helps out uh, a lot. It helps out with my writing. Um, I never had one of my artist friends try doing it, so, but, I mean. I never fucking artist. <laughs> I, I've <laughs> learned it from, uh, you know, one of the books I picked up and whatnot, uh, The Artist's Journey. So, I'm told from, you know, reading the book that it can help them out. Um, but, yeah, uh, actually, you know, that's a very good point that you bring up, because it really wasn't the morning pages that helped. The morning page kind of helped, like, kind of clear your mind and stuff. Um, because kind of like what, uh, NBC was getting into about having all the day to day stuff can end up clouding you and, uh, frustrating you and stopping you from when it's finally time to sit in front of that paper or that canvas or that computer screen to produce anything. So that's one thing that the morning page serves, like kind of putting all that frustration and stuff out on paper. And also tell no lies to shut the fuck up and leave you alone. No, no, no lives. Oh, yeah, that's it. No, I'm sorry. When, geez, when he mentioned geez. like work, I just remember one of the other issues is I have. I'm constantly trying to escape work and people that literally have nothing to talk about just insist on bugging me. <laughs> like, you know, I'm trying. <laughs> Leave me alone. To be a nice, good Christian human being, but you're really making me want to bring out the Satan. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we believe in Satan too, you know. Or nothing. Tag. So, so going back to the artist's journey, right? Um, the 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 creator of it, she was saying that you want to make sure to do the the morning pages every day. Unfortunately, I don't. I do it um, Monday through Friday on the weekend. I normally don't have my journal with me. I just leave it in my locker at work. But um, yeah, the the thing that she uses or and suggests that we use to fill that well is to try to go on a, what she called an artist date uh, once a week. And basically, an artist date is a date with just you. Um, no no family, no significant other, no kids, parents, friends, just you. You go out by yourself and just do something. Do something fun. You can go to a restaurant. Go to a movie, go to a museum, see an exhibit or something like that. And 
just enjoy that. Just enjoy because you're taking, you know, yourself out to date, but you're also taking your that inner child. And Can I get oh. the term date? <laughs> well, not after I you said just the inner said child. An thing. Inner child. <laughs> <laughs> it's very questionable now. Taking your inner child on a date. Can I get the third bit? No, but <laughs> you know, it, it, you gotta go now. <laughs> You have, uh, when you become an adult, you have, like, this whole thing where it's like you're supposed to stop having fun and whatnot. But one of the things that really help with that creativity um, is having fun. Yeah. Is, Heavily, is, And yeah. also just getting to know yourself better. And you really get to know yourself when you're out in public mm-hmm. and whatnot. Like, you know, anything can happen. You might meet someone new and whatnot, network. Um, um, or just, you know, have a talk or whatnot, or you might observe something like people around you, like, um, Anna constantly talks about people watching. I um, enjoy it. <laughs> but, uh, my it's something I haven't outfits. done. Like when I was taking the journey, I, I tried my best to do it, but it's, it's not an easy thing. Um, primarily for me, because I just felt kind of selfish with, uh, leaving, you know, uh, my wife and the kids behind to do this. That's me. And, you know, I've encouraged her to do it as well. But it's, it's a really hard thing to do. But it's, uh, from the book, she describes it as necessary. And I, I do agree with that. Uh, you definitely need to find time for yourself. Because um, I feel like you can't really become a better person. Unless, like, okay, how, no. how should I say this? You need to be selfish to become a better person. <laughs> I like to how become you were a better take person, you that. have to focus on yourself. Yeah. So that takes a level of selfishness before you can be able to start helping others. Like, so if you're in distress, if you're depressed, you're not living, you're not your best self, and you're not really helping others. So yeah, and you know what? Our society kind of cultivates the whole feel bad, feel bad. You're sick. You can't come into work. Yeah, everyone's gonna be messed up because of you, or um, you're not gonna have money for rent. You should feel bad that you, you know, taking this time off to go and enjoy things. Um, or you know, you just spent an hour watching TV. Uh, you know, you should feel bad. That's not you time. That's wasted time. The the idea of wasting time or taking time Did you for yourself. Still watch cartoons at uh, one? <laughs> oh, bro, yeah, well, things like that. No. Yeah, but I was technically by. Well, I was going on to say that. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's not selfish time. The sick one you can't really help, but I mean, we're well, we're kind of dragged into a mentality where even even like with taking care of yourself is selfish sometimes. Right. Yeah. I just want to ag- agree with the particular examples that you use. Oh, okay. It's more so like taking that act, using the money that you saved up to take that acting course, right? Yeah, things like that, yeah. Or to... Uh, um, go to paint and sips. Go, yes, go I to paint I have been putting sips. that off for a long time. Uh, um, just, just... Or taking that... Um, joining to groups, taking course and stuff where it's like you might have... Like, the money is there, but you might feel selfish because you might have, like, a friend or, you know, your 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 family would rather use it for, like, it could be used for something else, like rainy day funds. Yeah, or, or just being like scared, that. too. Right. That um, fear is there. Yeah. Uh, but you, you need to take that. Like, you need to, is you need to, first and foremost, you know, live for yourself and, um, and love like yourself. Your, your, yeah, the love yeah. yourself and your happiness is uh, very important. Uh, of course, it changes for our situation because you know we brought little ones into it, so yeah, we can't. We so just... I can't be like I'm going to run away and become an actor. It's like no, you got responsibilities. So I'm not telling anyone out there that's listening to us. If you're a parent, to <laughs> to ignore your children. It's like no, they didn't ask to be there. You take care of them little motherfuckers. Yeah, that's... But you, That was all you. You, MDC, I'm looking you in the eye. You free sexy mother... Sexy beast. You free <laughs> son of a flying bird. <laughs> you <laughs> With your beautiful wings unhindered. Fly. Fly, fly. Black man, fly. Just keep flying. Never, go, never touch the ground. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I do tell a lot of people who are... Quite, like I, I get a lot of people asking me, you're like, no lie at conventions, your mom... And you do your business, 
do you love like how, how would you tell someone that's par- don't <laughs> don't be free no i'm not gonna st- i do say that but i mean i say it jokingly and also kind of half serious like but you know, having children is not something you just do because you're bored but that's the, also the other thing but so many people use you. children as an excuse yeah. to not go for their dreams yeah they do and it's like for me i'm the complete opposite having kids it's like a must that I go for what I want. Like, it's an interesting setup. And one thing I wanted to point out, uh, another thing, like going back to like when you when you were talking about taking care of yourself. Now, see, it, it's crazy because you know, again, like you said, society and, and whatnot puts things in people's heads they have to, you know, do for the next man. Yes, but the thing yeah, about it, said it you better. can't do for the next person if you're not taken care of. You as parents, if y'all get sick and die. What's gonna happen to the kids? Like y'all. That's have a to good point. Good. Yeah. Y'all can't let stress kill you. You can't let things kill you. You can't go out throughout your life unhappy. All you know, kids pick up on all these things. And they suffer because of it. Yeah. Exactly. Like my mom, you know, she still went to school when she had me. You know, she still did her thing. And I'm giving, you know, we, you know, she she was still at home with her parents and whatnot. But at the same time, she made that count because you know some people stay home with their parents and don't get sick. Yeah. And so and the thing like, about it. You have society, my bad. You have society that will judge a person for staying home with their family. It's like, well, here's the thing: they could stay home and not do anything, or they could stay home and make it count, save their money, so when they get out, they are good and their parents can finally relax. Essentially, yeah. yeah. And I hate the that's, idea. That's really American society. Only. Yeah, I'm about to but, say. Uh, to add to that, I was going to say your mom still did like recitals and stuff yeah. like that. And, and uh, she was taught he? piano. She, you know, went to school. I imagine that's her passion, right? Yeah. Yeah. So she never stopped it. Yeah. Yeah. So she yeah. Still did it. <laughs> I mean, with us and four kids, we're not gonna stop because we have four and kids. And not to mention, uh, four. she made sure I had to one day, I had to uh, <laughs> look back and really realize, you know, she always had me in some sort of program. You know, uh-huh. cello early on. Uh, when I finally figured out that it was art, my thing, she got me in cartoonist class, like when I did comic books. She got me in art class all the way. Uh, I love Mama you know, MDC. Was, She's one of the best parents. Oh, uh, yeah. She, I was always, she really is. I was always the only black kid somewhere. I'll I tell you the truth. Oh, like, God. You know, I, but, and, and that's the thing. Like, she always made sure I was in something chasing it. Even if she didn't directly influence me in something, she gave me the means to do so, you know? Yeah, and that's something very important, is making sure that you instill um, in others, and then for us, in children, um, that, that that ability to be creative and to be, to be, to, to, to have that inner child, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't always have to be art, but like, pursuing the passions of the, pursuing the passions of yourself and your children, you know? You, yeah. If you do well by yourself, your children will reflect that. You know, to yeah. me, honestly, my fr- my philosophy on life, and I don't, I don't even think it's philosophy. I, I, I honestly look at it as a fact, an undeniable fact that it's everything in life takes balance. <laughs> you know, it's like everything needs to be balanced. Like, you know, looking after yourself as well as others and vice versa. Because, you know, the, the one thing I realize about a lot of people, I'm so glad I'm a single child that doesn't have children. I'm not going to lie. Because <laughs> it's, it's, let me, it's allowed me to really observe people with siblings and people with children a little bit differently from my point of view because I've had all this freedom and I look at some people that really get dragged down by their family and you know it's especially siblings like you have siblings like you know with family you gotta take care of each other but it's like you know are those siblings taking care of you that's you a know? good point and and I, what and F was saying, like America really has like con- misconstrued and twisted the the, the community. Yeah. You have so many different cultures around the world where family isn't where it's like you don't get pushed 18, out the nest. Out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're literally like, okay, you're part of this village, community, town, whatever it is. We are all in this together. Exactly. When you go up, we go up. When we go up, you go up. You know, it's a structured system where there's no fight for a ladder. But uh, the America. Uh, the, the, the Anglo Americanos, <laughs> you know, they really set it to where it's like it's a competition. Everything's a competition between siblings, between family, between yeah. you know cousins, everything. Racism, yeah, racism, but there's there's so much stress to have your life. Um, 
figure it out by the time that you're 18. 18 is ridiculous. Or, you know, 19. Like, what college are you going to go to? If you're not going to college, then you got to get a job and whatnot. Don't you get no little uh, 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 burger Both flipping job. Trap. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, it is. Both are a trap. Like, they teach you to uh, contribute and to um, give back to the community, but the community is this abstract thing and just a bunch of random strangers, and you just kind of become like a... Well, who am I in this abstract blank slate of and, and one thing society. I really want to talk about, speaking of things that kind of helped me get out of the funk, I watched this video of, of course, the guy's name, Cardone was his last name. I can't think of his first name. I shared it with Neff. And he was talking about how he, you know, made millions of dollars and whatnot. And he was talking about, and there was a, and there was a lot of things. The first thing that caught me, that, that really, uh, struck me in the video was the fact that me and Neff had actually said a rent. Oh, Grant, Grant Cardone? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. me and Anthony actually had said a lot of the things he had said, which showed me that, okay, we're definitely on the right path here. That's always nice, that affirmation. Yeah, and, and the thing about it, he, there, was some, there was a couple things he said that I really responded to, and that made me realize, like, let, okay, let's talk about, like, again, talking about, um, I guess selfishness. You know, let's just say there's a whole group of people that I want hung out with that pretty much don't hang out with, don't really have a desire to, right? Mm-hmm. And that may sound mean and rude, like aren't they your friends? I'm like, listen, if your friends are really your friends, they will support you. And when I say this, I don't necessarily mean that they necessarily, you know, buy your stuff or whatnot. Because honestly, I think that's relative to what you're doing. To s- not I was going to say, yeah. Not everything you do, people can necessarily back up for more reasons than otherwise. Yeah. However, mm-hmm. at the very least, they need to understand that you're busy and that you're, uh, you're, you're following your dream and what you need to do. And to respect I, it, too, not exactly. nag you or complain to you about it. You ain't never got time down. to hang with Yeah, yeah exactly. Don't put you down. Like, I always respect my friends. Like, I have a couple of friends that are like, Jamal, I know you're busy. And I'm, and I'm like, you know, you don't have to tell me that. The very fact that you say that shows me that you understand that I'm doing my thing and you don't want to bother me, but you also want to, you know, see me and see how I'm doing. I have no problem with you. But you have people like, hey, Jamal, come hang out. I'm like, well, what we doing? Something dumb and mundane. I don't know. <laughs> Something that doesn't really align with uh, also who you are anymore, too. Yeah. You can outgrow friends. Yeah. Especially when those friends haven't grown at all. Yeah, yeah. Heavily. They're hey. still doing the same thing last decade. Hey, yeah, where it's just like, we don't even do that anymore. I'm like, yeah. I like video games. We're coming over to play video games. Yeah, come on, we'll go do video games. Get there, and everyone's, I mean, I don't mind smoking, but, you yeah. know, I'm like, we're not even playing the game. Exactly. This is what I came to do. And, 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 and Grab the controller, come on. I'm about to go home. See, the only <laughs> people nowadays I hang out with are either the people I'm, I have some form of business relationship with or, or friends that understand what I'm doing with my life and want to be a part of that in some form. Like, they may not be directly interested in what I'm doing, but they, like, they definitely promote it. They make sure people know about me. If there's any opportunity that come up that pertain to me, they're like, hey, Jamal, this thing is happening. You might want to be in something. Like, all right, thanks for the information. That's yeah. extremely uh, helpful, yeah. That's definitely one thing that I, like, I understand the whole thing, not having the money, or maybe it's something that, you know, you don't want. You don't want this, uh, you know, art or painting or whatever or a specific album or whatever but it take it causes nothing to share Mm -hmm. it causes nothing to share it causes nothing to be to shout out because you might not be interested in it but if that's your homie the least you can do is share it because one of your friends might be exactly one thing i like about having friends who are aligned with um where i am today that this helps feed the well as well Mm -hmm. extremely helps feed the well i have friends who send me links Hey, you, do you know this artist, creator, whatever it does? Th- just a random link of something that seems like something I'm interested in. And these people who I've probably known less or spent less time with than the people from the past who I spent so much of my teen and young adult years with, they would show me something way more cool and interesting that aligns with what I'm into, and it just like, oh, I love this. Yeah. I'm so inspired. This is amazing. Or like, hey, um... Yo, this person put out like an ad. They're like, oh, I, I love getting those. Shout out to everybody who sends me a link where it's like, hey, are your commission's open. Here's a link from Twitter. I got a big friend. You're the best. I love you. Mm-hmm. Sending me links from Twitter like, hey, there's someone looking for commissions. Or, you know, here's a t- people tag me. 
and like, hey, this person's looking for this, that, or hey, this person has an open whatever have you. Exactly. And it's like, even if um, it's not a business venture that I'm going to pursue particularly, still nice to go into that avenue. If they're thinking about me, yeah. wanna, they uh, care and support me. I kind of want to snowball off of that. Uh, yes, you want to yeah. try. Creative friends, friends that you uh, vibe with is definitely a big part, like I want to say, for filling that well. Like, they share stuff with you. And just, mm-hmm. um, you know, when we sit down and we have, like, our uh, our think tanks and whatnot, and, you know, we bounce ideas and stuff off each Those other. Those are the best. That's, yeah, that's one of the best feelings um, yeah, for is. me. Like, I, th- I mentioned in a, in a podcast before where it's, like, it kind of revealed to me, like, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to have more meetings like this with other creatives and uh, really make that uh, a part of my career. You really want friends that are going to introduce you to people and tell people about you when you're not around. Yeah, yeah that too. That's what you really to, repre- to represent you when you're not there. Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a big thing about having a tribe. Yeah, mm-hmm. because it doesn't feel forced. Um, you, For me, I never specifically said I only want creative friends. Yeah. You know, that's pretty much at some point in my life, I decided that I no longer wanted to put as much effort into my old friends mm-hmm. because we lo- I just disconnected from them, you know? Like, I just wasn't down for everything they were doing. Slowly but surely, unconscious or subconsciously, I stopped being completely connected. Mm-hmm. And then moving forward, there have some who've come with me. I'm not going to say they all left. I have some who've come with me. They message, we talk, we create. We, but it's like... We have a central thing that we talk about, something that's focused on, and it just became so natural. Yeah. And then people, more people kind of came to that, and that really heavily feeds the well. Like how you mentioned that when you went out, you met new people, mm-hmm. you were in a creative space, yeah. like all this was going on around you was a bunch of different things. But all in all, those people were there for the same reason you were there. Mm-hmm. And you met them, and I'm sure that added to your well. Just, oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, and, it's empowering. And the thing about it, it's like it's a trade-off. You know, technically there's no such thing as unconditional love because at the end of the day, you benefit from everything on some level. It's like, you know what? It's like, okay, whatever. You have family. You know, that's somewhat unconditional. But at the end of the day... It's got conditions too, though. We're learning that they do, right? Yeah. yeah. We're allowing ourselves to put condition on those things now. Exactly. It's like, you know, your friends are so because they they fulfill you in some way. Mm -hmm. You know? So it's not completely unconditional. It's like you... That's why you have different friends that you love differently. Yeah. You know? And so it's the same thing with, like, a business relationship. You know, it's like, y'all are there to benefit each other. That's why y'all work together. doesn't mean y'all not going to like each other. Of course. And sometimes it's like, you know what? Today we should just hang out. You know, we've been working hard. Let's just go see a movie or get some coffee or something. Yeah. Then after that, back to work. You know? And and, and the thing about a business relationship, people always take the, the, uh, empathy out of it for some reason but you have to have empathy for the person you're working with because it's like in order for you to achieve what you want to achieve through them they have to achieve what they want to achieve through you yeah you have to establish that emotional connection we as humans that's what we need despite what we've been told and that's one thing i don't understand when it's like don't start uh businesses with your friends or family because it's basically like saying so should i start with strangers because it's like if that stranger come and they turn around and betray me, it's like I never knew them. Well, here's the thing. I, I do understand why that is. Because let's think about our own experiences with trying to do things with friends. Well, okay. But, oh, but, no, but we're yeah, friends in BC. Listen, I, you can but, look back on that, right? Mm-hmm. And then, but at the same time, it's trial and error. That's through, true. Through that time, we saw the people that was um, serious. We saw yeah. the people that were serious about it. Um, mainly us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's here? We started off 13. Here we are at three. But, Jeez. Um, I, I feel like that's a good number. Three out of 13. Yeah. Dang. Like, you do like percentage wise. Well, yeah. pretty good. Yeah. It's Let's a, talk. It's a numbers game. These were people that we knew in high school, coming out of high school. Right. And then as it became, as we became older and our life took on different revolving aspects. Yeah. At the and end it, of it, 13, three of us were really passionate about yeah, this. And it's not to say that they won't come around. But um, we ain't waiting for it. I feel like in the sense of <laughs> I got shit to do. Like, even if it's a stranger, right? Yeah. Like 
just the what everything you going through, that person should eventually become your friend. Like yeah, if absolutely. it's that that's basically what I mean. Like, okay, you might not Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like don't like saying they're not going to business with your friends. It's like well, what if I want friends? Like as a business partner, well, that, like just say, I'm, just I'm saying, go to business with strangers, and then they're going to stay strangers. Yeah, yeah. never connect like, with them. Like, yeah, I feel like that's that's yeah. not the case. It's still if that person still later betrays you, it's still going to hurt. Yeah, it's not something that you're um, expecting, of course. But I feel like you're kind of expecting it if you want a lot of yourself to say, open up to them. Yeah, yeah you're kind of setting yeah, stuff up. It's a catch twenty two. Well, no, no, no. I don't think it's a catch twenty two. Dang. Oh man, what is it called? A self. A, a self- sabotage. Mm, no, no, uh, it's, a, it's a self <laughs> self fulfilling prophecy. Yes, there you go. You will say it again. Self fulfilling prophecy. Yes, a self fulfilling prophecy. Prophecy, yeah. prophecy. Weird, but basically but looking, um, putting your energy towards this possibility and that possibility happening, and you're just like, oh my goodness, I knew it, I knew it yeah. was going to happen. Yeah, like it's a, like well, kind of like a rainy day fund. I'm going to put this yeah. money for a rainy day. And that rainy day comes, and luckily enough, that rainy day takes up all the money from that rainy day fund. <laughs> you <laughs> already like, I'm know. I'm so glad I had that rainy day fund. And it's like, uh, yeah. That's not to say that rainy days wouldn't come, but if you focus really hard on it, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's and kind of like that's what you're preparing for. It's like you just, it's a self-fulfilling And process. I think another way of looking at this is that, you know, I feel like the whole thing, not going to business with friends and family, is one of those quotes people misunderstand. Like most quotes. <laughs> That's why, people, most that's why people, people just start sharing quotes on Facebook without understanding. Or what does it say? Everything sounds deep. <laughs> Kiss me. <laughs> he threw a glove in my face. <laughs> Sorry. Everything sounds deep from someone who's never read a book before. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much, you know. And, and I like that quote. I think it was pretty interesting. Duh. Or, or and you know, I mean, <laughs> listen, everything is deep if you only swim in the in the. The shallow, shallow pool, shallow yeah, pool. You know, exactly, it's like, yeah. It's like this, and I, that's why I just stop myself from being an asshole to people. Like that's, you know, me as a child, that's why I just talk shit about people who thought Joker was a great movie. Oh goodness. Yeah, we we definitely we. I, that's I think a whole we're thing. going to do like a. I want to talk about Birds of Prey as well too. One of our. I need well, to I watch seen it. it. I can't Have you seen it? Are you gonna watch? To. Yeah. Why? <laughs> really? Why? Maybe because I need he to hasn't know. seen Suicide Squad in the movie theaters. Like you haven't seen Justice League in the movie theaters, or have you hasn't seen Wonder Woman in the movie theaters? You see movies. That's your thing. That's the thing okay, that see, made I'm you. Stop you right there. I can't believe <laughs> like I it. Just said, everything is deep when you only swim on the shallow end. <laughs> God, it doesn't get more shallow than DCEU. Yeah, <laughs> dang. You know it's sad though because he's the movie buff. Like I he am. sees movies. I'm, I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> So if he hasn't Far seen right. it, get yeah, no, don't go there. No, I'm going. I'm go. already there. No, come back. <laughs> but how, how Kubrick? Anyway. Oh, you oh. lost me. See, there you go, doing that movie stuff again. <laughs> I opened the door. Oh, um, but you know, but no, really, it's one of those you know quotes that people don't understand. I think the best way to put it is that you want to work with people that are serious. Whether they're friends or strangers, like yeah. at least with strangers, you look at and it's, it's the same thing with friends and family. You look at what they've already done. You're like, okay, this is what they've done. Same thing with a stranger. It's like, okay, they got this business, they got this going on. They, I know I can work with. I I know they're qualified to work with. Whether we vibe or not is a different story. Yeah. But I at least have a mad I'm like, okay, I see what's going on here. Can I benefit? Yes. Let's try. It. Let's go shake hands and see what happens. Let's talk over coffee. Same thing with friends. Like. You know, the reason the three of us are in this room because we knew we were serious despite everything that has happened over the years. Yeah. We're still here, you know? Yeah. We can Right, and it's not like we didn't go through our share of um, shortcomings, of uh, bouts of depression, just, you know, a lot of ish and happened to us. Setbacks and... Since uh, H&H LLC. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot has happened to us and whatnot, a lot of falling outs and stuff like that. But, you know, we're still here. Yeah. And whatnot. Yeah. And I know one thing I wanted to go back to that video by, uh, God, what's his Cardone. Yeah, uh, Cardone. You can just say Vlad. Vlad. Yeah. Oh. Vlad TV. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing he said that stuck with me, he was like, you know, what is it that all our successful people have in common? Mm-hmm. It's like, simply put, they're up obsessed. You know? It's like they don't think like other people. They're obsessed. You know, a, a 
obsession is one of those curse words of our society. If you're obsessed with something, you're a little crazy. Yeah, that's obsession, obsession is. isn't really socially. It's it's not. It's not socially acceptable. Yeah, like you can have like a a, a, a you can uh hmm. What, what's the word? Like a hobby, right? Yeah. Like uh, something that you might, you know, lean towards. Like, like yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm an artist or whatever. But, like, when you take it where it's like you're obsessive with your art, that's all you talk about mm-hmm. and whatnot, and you becoming an artist and whatnot, it makes people uncomfortable. Yeah, right. you should be shamed for it. It's a terrible thing that that's the thing that you because only do. You need to, from variety, that can't be all you do. I, 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 but I feel like the reason because... And I, I wasn't gonna say on the second when you get a chance. Um, yeah, I, I didn't want to butcher it, but someone has said something about usually a trait or a quality that makes you uncomfortable or kind of dislike a person. Sometimes that's because you envy that person because of it. Like you gotta, you yeah. gotta kind of look at it, right? Yeah, of course. And I was, I was thinking about this concerning one of our uh, friends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> But we're hopefully going to have this person on the show later. Um, but yeah, they're like, to me, ever since I met them, right, and talked to them, I'm like, yo, this person is cocky. This person is overconfident, and I can't stand them, right? <laughs> oh, boy. Like, last okay, time, man, like, when I talked I to them, like, last year, asking them to be on the show and whatnot, it was like, even then, I probably wanted to punch them in the face. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jesus. But I had to stop and I had to seriously think about it. And it's like, why do I feel such a way because, you know, because of this person Mm -hmm. and whatnot? And it's like, I had to look at myself and I took a step back and I was like, you know, maybe because I've suffered with low self-esteem, I'm not used to seeing what a confident person looks like. That's something really saying? important. Yeah, yeah. So to someone who suffered from low confidence, when they see someone that's confident in the words that they say, it comes to me as overconfidence. Mm-hmm. When honestly, that's just that's just them being confident. You know, it reminds me of this time. Well, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna go with specifics. I'll just say, you know, it's kind of like people who feel like certain people are better than them. Or they're like, how come you ain't got no time for no one? And it's like, well, it's just as busy. How come you ain't got no occupied time? Like, you know, it's like... <laughs> how come all your time free? You know, exactly. You know, it's like, you know, people are focused. And, you know, confidence comes with experience. You know, you're only going to be confident when you know you can do something. Yeah. Right. You know? And yeah. you know how you know you're going to do I it? Mean, the more time you spend on it. Yeah. It's true. I, uh, I say yes on that. But then also, it's like a mindset as well, too. If you, like, have a negative mindset, it doesn't matter, like, how many years you spent on it. True. You're going to find yourself, um, when someone approach you, like, I, I still suffer from this. When someone approach me and they ask me, what have you been up to? You know, what have you been doing? Like, I just choke up on that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, even though, you know, um, I'm working with AWA, uh, me and Anna starting, you know, this company, mm-hmm. um, I helped you on your last film. Mm-hmm. Um, we're doing this, the podcast. Yeah, I don't and you were part of say. an anthology. Yeah, that's the AWA thing. Um, I don't. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about the other thing. I didn't know. No, it's like a thing as a whole. Oh, but sweet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Making sure you talk credit about yourself. that. Yeah. I don't. I don't like talking about that. I don't feel comfortable talking about that. Like I really downplay myself, and I'm like, oh, you know, just work. <laughs> you know, you know, that, I definitely want to say, and this is kind of directed to you in a sense. <laughs> when you talk about, you know, about confidence, and let me tell you something. If you ask me, am I confident? I'm like, I'm gonna tell you. It depends. Yeah. There's some things. I'm and and that, that's something I was gonna bring up. Sometimes you annoy the fuck out of me with the <laughs> shit you say, <laughs> and that's that's why I had to realize, like, I really had to look, and I had to be like, is I don't think is you know you coming off has overconfident, you're just confident. I'm not used to that. Mm -hmm. I'm not used to that. And I want to be that, right? I want to be that so bad. I envy that. Like, how can you talk about 
like just whatever the fuck you want to talk about. There's always an opposite or an alternative to things. Like, okay, let's talk about when I went out last night, right? Uh-huh. I never been to this venue, and honestly, that doesn't matter because even with venues I go to all the time, I'm always a little nervous. Always. Oh my god. Yeah. And now I'm outside. Yeah, I know, right? So I go, in there, <laughs> so I go, I go to the door, the door, and I'm, I'm walking around this gallery. It's you know, it's spaced out. It's not like it's crowded. It's, it's people there. But mostly everyone's there with someone. I'm there by myself for the most part. This friend that invited me, I haven't seen her yet. So I'm just walking around like, okay, there's art in the wall. I'm going to sit here and just pretend like I'm trying to understand it. Um, <laughs> you know, I walk around and I'm just, it is the most awkward I can be. I'm awkward as heck uh, most of the time. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, same. But same. the thing about it, I also look at it like, well, here's the thing. What, what outweighs what? You know, like I'm here to first of all, the first, it's easier when you're invited, and that's the first thing. But even in places where you're not invited, you just go. It's like, well, the fact is, I do, I am still going to approach it just by being here. It's like, well, they got more money tonight than to me, you know. Yeah. So I'm not here without purpose. I'm making sure they get the paid. So even if the people here don't like me, the owner definitely does. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Especially, especially the more they see me, and. Honestly, I just kind of use it. And the thing about it, I've, what I've learned in, in my experience is that a lot of times when, you know, I'm, especially in, in the circles I'm into, people are just as, you know, just as nervous as you are. There's a lot of people that for years that would, would see me that didn't talk to me until later. They're like, you know, I always see you, always mean to talk to me, but, you know. Aww. So I'm going to talk to you now. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like, they, they well, I'm going to use that. Fuck it. You know, it's, it's like, you know, I'm sitting here nervous, but there's other people. I'm nervous to talk to people, but there's people that are nervous to talk to me. Something right, about yeah. that is a little bit reassuring that we're all kind of feeling this feeling, you know, yeah. that it's not just you alone with all these confident people. It's like, no, we're all, you know, you a know, little bit unsure sometimes. Yeah, it, it just a little bit depends. Like, I, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say, I, I'm pretty outgoing and whatnot, but I have anxiety up the ass. Like, I went up and I was invited to a, a, a celebration dinner. I get to the venue. As soon as I'm about to walk in the door, I immediately want to walk away from the door. I'm not going to lie to you. I almost Why? paced outside to work up to walking in there. What? Why? Because it, it was packed full of people. Oh. Uh. And I'm like, and I, but instead, I just literally, as as bad luck camp, that dude that I shared that video of, he says, do something every day that scares you. And it took me I think a while. I fell asleep on that part. Oh my jeez. That one part. <laughs> it, it took me a while to But no, really, I totally agree with that. You know, it took me a while to really understand that. Because I'm thinking that to the extreme. I'm like, so maybe I should rob a bank every day? Oh goodness. Oh, my but goodness. actually it's the simplest. <laughs> maybe I should punch an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, but man. Really, it's the simplest of things, like talking to a person, walking into a building. And that was one of the moments. Jamal just walking in the building. I literally pushed myself into the building. Can I be honest? Mm-hmm. I had no idea. You were always seem so sure and comfortable in mostly every space you're in. Unless, but you, you set strict boundaries for yourself. Like, you don't go to public pools. I, I, you were like, I do not go to public pools with y'all. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I don't no go one to wants to make Negro soup. Like. But, <laughs> <laughs> you okay. son of a... <laughs> I'll come back to you. <laughs> the specific places I generally will never go. That, that's, that's, Unless, you know, there's a specific interest for me going there. But you've always, ever since I've known you, had strict boundaries, and you made sure that for yourself you never put yourself in a position where you know that this is what you want. Yeah. But that does cause a problem, and you working towards the idea that I have to get out of my comfort zone sometimes, mm-hmm. that's a big thing. But also, for me, observing on the outside, it's very new that you have anxiety, that you have the exact same feelings I have whenever you go out. Yeah, Literally I'm, meals I'm the other night. Right when I go anywhere, and it, time it happens, I'm trying to figure out exactly why. Because like I said, I'm not great. For, first and foremost, I'm terrible at small talk. I hate small talk with a passion. I like small talk. I hate yeah, it. I just I like small it. talk too. If, if small talk was a homeless person <laughs> and I was a rich suburban kid, I'd beat the crap out of them. See, I feel like we shouldn't go that way. <laughs> That's how much I hate small talk. I'm willing to sound racist. Okay. <laughs> Like, Funny thing is, ho- homeless people isn't even a race. I know, right? So we're just acknowledging that they, <laughs> are, a, they are a genre you know, of their own. <laughs> so, but like, really, like, I like to get down straight to the point, to be honest. So when it comes to small talk, it's like, 
you know, that's how you open up a conversation a yes. lot of the times. And so this is who I want to talk to. Unless there's anything directly I can be talking with, I pretty much don't talk to people. It's like, I, n- I'm not going to say hi. I'm just not going to do that. We're not talking about the weather. <laughs> you know, but. And that slipped off my tongue real easy. Like, but, you know, I've also looked at, and, and it also comes to, like, knowing yourself. Like, you know, me, I look the way I do. And I started doing the same. I started to carry things with me. That also helped. You got so many hands. It's a little easier for me to be less nervous, I guess. You know? Okay. Um, yeah. Like, you know, I just I had my little flogger that I made because I was a conversation starter with a lot of people. Um, and sometimes you just put yourself in a situation where you know a conversation is inevitable. You know, like I ended up taking a lot of photos with random people last night. This guy used me as a. a <laughs> used um, me. <laughs> As a, a prototype, but he ended up taking some good pictures of me. I sat on the couch that just so happened they was about to take photos, and my friend was like, "No, no, no, he's taking photos with us." So I'm like, "Yeah." So you that's know, pretty cool. You just sometimes you really have to if if you can't talk to someone, find a way to be involved in their current situation too. So you know, obviously with the it's a good icebreaker. Yeah, you know, there's there's different ways around it. Like I said, you know, sometimes. You know, that's why I take music everywhere. I need my theme music and motivation you know, <laughs> to get through a situation, you know? So, that too, yeah. Music is a heavy one for me. Yeah. Especially when I'm out and I'm just like, I don't I don't know what I'm supposed to be feeling here. Yeah. Go to my playlist. <laughs> yeah, wear your surroundings, that's all. But <laughs> Yes. But you know, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely have my anxiety. Oh, my God. Like, I, I, can, I can name some triplets, times, God, you know, but it's like, I often, what, what keeps me afloat on a lot of things, even when I'm in the funk, is like, okay, what's your purpose for this? That's what it comes down to. So recentering yourself, that's pretty important. You know, it, it's like, what's the overall po- point? You know, once you remember that, once you can fix that, it's a little easier to break through whatever's blocking you. Like, it's like, yeah. you know, do some every day. Like, t- today, it was, we celebrated my grandma's 90th birthday today. Oh, happy and, birthday. Um, I made a crown for her, which was awesome. And oh, that was beautiful, yeah. Yeah, and I took photos while I was there. I was asked to do that. And, well, at oh, some point. Oh, the family. Yeah, kind of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the, the ones that matter most to me, yes. <laughs> yes, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, But at some point, I was talking with my cousin. She was like, so, you know, you're the, you're the, you're the uh, diplomat for, you're speaking for all the cousins. I was like, uh, okay. No. I did not want to get up and speak. Nope. <laughs> you know, I was like, I got to get up and give him a speech. But I was like, you know what? I do have something to say to my 90-year-old grandma. And my soon-to-be 90-year-old grandpa. And I got up and I did it. I didn't originally want to, but once I really got it in my mind that I needed to do it, I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make everyone else happy to do better. <laughs> you know? And honestly, I think uh, one of my other cousins kind of outdid me. But, you know, I yeah. felt pretty good. Yeah, said, you know, um, and, and that's what it comes down to. You have to remember your point and get there. You know, what I mean, intent, intent. Yeah, mm-hmm. to set intention for yourself, not to just a, not let yourself just become whims to the moment. Yeah. Sometimes, even when you feel like you are at the whim, like you suddenly getting told, um, you had enough time to tell yourself, "Well, if we're gonna do this, I'm gonna do it like this," yeah. and you set an intention for yourself, and that really can help in a lot of situations. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, okay, I just go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I wanted to go back to what you said about obsession, which is like this this ugly word, right? It's if you're obsessed over something, you're crazy, mm-hmm. you're insane, you're a lonely you're person, crazy. you you don't you know how to socialize. Oh man, <laughs> you don't know how to socialize, and that's the opposite. I'm a very talkative, extroverted person nowadays. I'm more of like a, the cookie old lady in the house, but you know, I like that. I went out for fried pickles and I got none. I'm still mad about that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want whiskey. I wanted fried pickles. Yeah, I wanted whiskey, but I also wanted fried pickles. Mm-hmm. But, you know, um, I'm obsessed. And yeah. it reminded me of a conversation that I had uh, talked to a friend about because she's uh, always asking me, which I find so strange because I don't see myself as somebody that is, can give advice to people. So mm-hmm. I have the into that mindset. You know, it's, it's the whole imposter syndrome thing where working towards my business, I'm making myself an expert in this field. I'm working towards yeah. that. So I have people asking me, how do you do this? And can I get your decision? I had somebody else asking me about character design. How mm-hmm. does this character design look to you? Um, I'm, so, I'm doing a comic thing, and I just want you to, I just want to get your feedback. I'm like, mine? Yeah. My feedback? Holy crap, okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, someone asked me, like, how do you draw? Yeah. What, what, well, how do you draw every day? Because I pretty much draw every day. 
Even when I'm in a funk, I draw every day. I might hate it, but I do it. Yeah. And the simple question is, I'm obsessed. I get this really weird itch feeling. I feel weird. I feel incomplete when I haven't sat at my desk and drawn anything, or I haven't grabbed a sketchbook, or I haven't thought about a story idea, you know? Like, I'm sitting here, and I'm... It's really weird. Like I feel bad for my kids. I'm not going to lie. I feel bad for them. Because they're like, Mommy, come play the game with us. And I'm like, okay. We play the game. We want to play Minecraft? Is that what we're doing? All right. I'm building my world. No, Mommy, just do our thing. No. Start a new world. Put the seed. I'm building this town. Mommy, no. I've already made my character. It's already happening. The seed's still low. And they're just like, ma. But I love my what I do. And they think it's, I love them, too. So, of course, I'm playing with them. And, and you know, and that you know. is a good point about how to involve into what you do. Don't force them like me. But, yeah, no, but they love the stuff, too. So, I mean, yeah. normally like, my daughter will like, ask me questions, too. I love it. Because, like, taking photos at this dinner today, I was asked to do that, you know? And, and the yeah, crowd, I was like, that's nice. Because when I found out um, Grandma was looking for a crown, I, 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 I kept it to myself. I'm like, I'm going to just make her one. But she spoiled it by saying, I mean, unless you don't make me one, say it. <laughs> Not the pause anymore. Now I just got to say yes. <laughs> but now you won't know I did this out of my own heart, but I did, and then still show it. But I mean, you said it. Yeah, so I was like, I love you, Grandma. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Damn it. Uh, but you know, like little things like that, just kind of slowly making it a, a circular format. So it's like, and that's another way of getting out of the funk. It's like, yeah. okay, how can I make these little ventures with other people part of my project? You know, like, um, yeah. You know, I, 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 it helps Sorry. that I have some relatable friends at work. Not many, but I do. Yeah. But, um, you know, and, and sometimes having a conversation with people can be, uh, oh, my God. Well, a support group. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Having a fallback group when you're in a funk, whether it's virtually on Facebook like my friend. I don't see her too often, but we we talk, and it definitely fills my will to talk to somebody, just listen to their stories. I yeah. love listening to people's stuff. Yeah. Especially when I'm feeling dry on my own stuff. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And they just go off on a tangent. And they're like, I'm sorry, I went on too long. I'm like, how dare you apologize? Mm -hmm. No, you beautiful being. Tell me more. Exactly. And, you know, pushing them and, onward. And I love that's it. one thing I really want to point out. Because one thing I really hate is that you have people out here that are really talented. And they're around people that, I'm not going to say, uh, I know, it's no. I'll just say, they don't appreciate passionate. it. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. not passionate. They don't, you know, I'll be fucked. So, <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, but honestly, it, it really, We're not really sorry. me that you have people that, because they don't understand what you are doing or whatever, they don't care about you. Yeah, and, the thing about and then it, they demean you. Yeah, they demean you, ignore you, whatever, and it's like, you know, Devalue at your the work. very least, I'll just shut up and listen. You yeah. Know? And so, I'm not, I don't, I, you know, I always support my friends differently, you know, I tell you, you know, this may not be my thing, I may not be interested in this, but I know people that are. You know, I'm, I'll, you know, if something comes up that pertains to what you're interested in, I'm like, okay, I found this thing. You might want to check this out. Yeah, I love that. And so, and it always hurts me that I hear, like, and it goes beyond friends. You know, and like, I'll be, I don't expect When you hear it in general, too. Family, you know, because family's a bit different. You choose friends. You don't choose a family. Yeah, family, they can have a wide array of whatever interest, you know, pertaining to what influenced them yeah, exactly. or didn't, when you know. When it comes to friends and spouses, they, I feel like, if you're going to, have people that you've chosen in life, they all be the one that are going to better you. You know, they're, they're going to make sure that you're going to uh, get your job. Because I'm going to tell you, I have a lot of friends that support me. They are not really artists, but they support what I do. They're like, this guy's talented. I want to see you succeed. Yeah. You know? And I really appreciate that. Like, I know I have some people that like, they've never drawn a picture in their life, but they want to know what ne what's the next movie I'm working on. You know? And that's gorgeous. It really is. That tribe, that support network, that can, if you're someone, if you're someone that doesn't look towards that, I would consider reevaluating that, mm -hmm. finding out you, yourself, what makes you uncomfortable with it, because it's so important. We are human beings that need connections. We need people around us yeah. for comfort reasons, for reassurance, but also for, you know, refilling the well. Mm -hmm. the pe like, Humans, we are each other's big inspirations as well. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to have read all these amazing stories or watch works of, um, you know, films and works of art and things like that if people didn't exist. Exactly. So it's 
you you're yeah. cool for people in a way. Exactly, you know, and you don't fit in the world full for shit. <laughs> you know, Ew. Be blunt, you know, it's like, you know, make sure you got the most purified water that's on, you know, nourish you, you know? Yeah. It, make sure it nourishes you too, that you're not just on the, um, the giving end of it. Yeah. You should be on the receiving Because exactly. a lot of people, you know, you feel like you don't deserve it or whatever have you. And I, I really wish the best that you look into yourself and take care of yourself. Because mm-hmm. your art's going to suffer if you don't take care of yourself. You know? Going back to obsession, I feel like I'm not obsessed enough. People people say that I, I seem obsessed with the thing I'm into. I'm like, really? I don't feel like I'm obsessed enough. And that could be something that you feel like because job pulls from me or time constraints. And it's like, I had that same issue too where I almost gave up on art because mm-hmm. I felt like I couldn't do one or the other. Yeah. You know, I, I, mean, I, I could only do one or the other. It was either work and make sure that, you know, me and Aaron are all well off and the children – or pour more into my art. And I tried to work in an art thing, and I hated it. Mm-hmm. Miserable young adult years. It's a trap. Getting a job just for the sake of getting a job is a trap. Yeah. Unless you have an intent, and you're only 18. So honestly, I look at you at that age. I look at my siblings at that age. Between the ages of 18 and 20, 17 and 20, focus on you. Figure out yeah. who you are. That's the time you get to do it. And it's slower. The tw- yes, a between, honestly, 18 and 25. Figure who you are. 25, I'm hoping that you might be able to get it together. But, I mean, that depends on your learning curve. And, and listen, life is nothing but a series at the end of the day. Yeah. Whether that's watching a movie, reading a book, going, traveling, going to a club, whatever you do is experiences. So you want to have the best experiences. Yeah. That's why I don't waste money on DCEU movies, <laughs> I kind of want to see Birds of Prey, but I already know that I'm not going to. Not my Harley. <sighs> I mean, what's the point of it? Not my pudding. What was it, the fantabulous, uh, uh, I don't know. See? It was literally long-ass title that's all about Harley Quinn and Birds of Prey. And it's just like, what? I'm sorry, it's who? The Huntress? Black, Black Canary? What? Um, what, what was the other one? Care. Vixen? And they're like, who? Who are those people? Who? The story's about who? Harley. Who? Why'd you put them in it then? Why'd you mush it together? Yeah, so I'm not going to, like I said, but, that, but that's oh, yeah. my point. You know, you want to have I'm going to go watch it, though. Come on. See live music, damn it. Oh, you yes. And, and, and go to a concert. Do it. Music. You know, it's just, and that's the thing about it. It's like, you never know what is going to fill your well. You know, you never know until you go and look for different things. Levels. you never knew, you never knew. No. Have you? I'm not going to go into it, but I will. Yeah, fill your well with water from different rivers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And you're never going to step in. make that an inspirational quote on Facebook or I will find you. But you, you can never step into the same water twice. That's my favorite thing. Like, yeah. honestly, I mean, Disney's a huge wall of inspiration for me. If Disney wasn't here, I would have found another inspiration. Yeah, but they also killed Star Wars, though. Well, I don't know if that's Disney's fault. Can we it's blame Disney's George fault. Lucas? We can't blame George yeah, Lucas at all. Yeah, he sold it, they ruined it. So it's still their fault. And Disney is the culprit behind a lot of things. Disney. But the animators, the people who put their heart and souls into drawing it, that's where I put my yeah, information from. I yeah, agree. they like they they made that them, you know, they absorbed into themselves and then they portrayed it beautifully. And it, it, the fandom that I follow is the one that's behind the animated works, mm-hmm. the gorgeous artwork and the books and the storyboarding. Like these people made that their passion and it passed on to me. Yeah. You know, it, it definitely influenced our generation. Yes. And yes. I want to be the next generation of doing that. You know. So Disney's a huge creative well for me. We watch the Black Culture. <laughs> oh boy, do we right now, dude? You've been quiet for like twenty five minutes. That was actually something I wanted to say um, <laughs> when y'all brought up Birds of Prey. Uh, we recently watched um, the Black Cauldron, and our roommate suggested to us that uh, we should like start reviewing stuff because I think he wants to. Be oh on boy, it too. that 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 movie, man, that movie sucked. Yeah. That movie sucked really it's bad. It's really sad, too, because I was <laughs> like, oh, poor Princess Elowin. Is that what her name was? The I don't remember any of the people's names. <laughs> Sorry. Except for Gurgi, right? Gurgi. Oh, okay, well, we got in there. Yeah, that's going to be something we're going to bring up. Um, definitely want to talk about, I guess, animated movies. Dude, we love animated stuff. Well, uh, well, you love well, animated stuff? Well, well, I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like animated stuff, but y'all like Wesley. Oh, okay, you're right. All right, discovering things. Yeah, even though I can't believe you didn't know. <laughs> um, I guess in the last second, Neff, how do you how do you fill the well? Um, 
I mean, I I told for my part. The journaling, and the artist way. Yeah, you're right. Or the yeah, the going dates. on artist dates. Uh, going with uh, setting up groups with uh friends, like minded like minded individuals, where um you're working on a project or something like that. Yeah. And just bouncing ideas off each other. Uh, that's definitely something for me. When I um, leave from all of that, I'm just filled with so much inspiration to work on my own stuff. Yeah. So I'm definitely, um, definitely love doing that. And um, as far as working my way through a creative block, that's what you have to do. You have, you have to work. Like before, uh, before I learned that, I would just sit around and just wait for inspiration to hit. And who knows when that's going to be, right? I'm in the field of so much inspiration. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, Stuck. you got to you got to work your way through it. Uh, in one of the in the anthology that I participated in, uh, one of the things that I said, you know, when you when you're writing, and um, your mind is just telling you all this stuff, like, yeah. man, this isn't this is bad. <laughs> Like, why did you write this? Yeah. And it literally, while you're writing it, it's telling, your mind is trying to tell you to edit it yeah. and whatnot. And I'm like, God. I tell so many, I tell Jamal this, uh, MDC, I tell, I tell MDC this, I tell, you know, uh, Midnight this. Do not refrain from editing while you're writing. Your I goal when I you know. do the rough draft is just I, to finish it. I finish hate it. Finish it <laughs> and sleep on it. And when you sleep on it, then you look back at it. You look back at it at a, at a different uh, point of view now that your mind is rested. As like, a scriptwriter, I never want to take that advice when he's always right. Just get he it out. That's not. the main thing, to get to start it and to finish it. That's your main goal. No matter what your mind is telling you, uh, just just finish it. This is, uh, this is a big thing that happens to me with uh, just in life in general, not just creating but um, this is a bit off topic, but working out too. Mm-hmm. Uh, my my mind tries to persuade me to like, ooh, why do twenty push ups? Just do ten. It's been a while. <laughs> and, well, that's and, me all the time. When I'm running, you know, don't go for a mile. Just do half a mile. You know, you're not feeling so well. You know, you really didn't stretch. <laughs> it happens in so many things, but you literally got to push through that because I feel like honestly, your mind is trying to protect you. Yeah. And whatnot, but if you want to get back better, you have to put like with uh, what Cardone said. You have to make yourself uncomfortable. Things do not grow. Things grow uh, uh, in um, uncomf- uncomfortable, uncomfortable grounds. That's the only way that it can grow. And you know, I just wanted to add that another thing we we as humans tend to get used to, and I know I tend to fall into this, is comfort. And routine, you have to change things up. Like I realize, yeah, yeah like, that's how it is. You, you know, can't grow in comf- in a comfort uh, environment. You know, like me growing back to working out, I changed my workout recently because you know what I was doing just wasn't working anymore. And mm-hmm, the same mm-hmm. thing, the thing about like everything physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, it works the same way. It's an exercise. It, it needs change eventually, and it's like you know when you work out, sometimes you have to change your workout. It's the same thing with inspiration. You get in a funk. It's like, okay, clearly what I've been doing has not been working. Yeah. So I need to do something different. I need to change my playlist of, or what, 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 to what I usually tank to or whatever. I need to, maybe I need to look at a different book, get inspiration from a different, watch a different movie, do a different event. You know, you just need to do different things. Maybe walking around for like three hours in a circle isn't helping either. <laughs> you know? You know, but you have to figure it out, like, you have to reach down and say, okay, What's blocking me right now? And what do I need to do to get out of this? Like, I, I realize I definitely had a, you know, I'm so anti-money. It's so <laughs> hard for me to sit through, like, a business deal. But I've begun doing that now. Because I have to officially be thinking about things in that sense. You yeah. Know? Um, and, and many other things I've just been doing differently. You know, and you just have to change it up. You have to realize that as every day goes by, that's less days you have. You know, well, I don't think it's so that way, but yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, the thing it's, so it's true, though. It's so it's easy true. to <laughs> but it's true. miss how quickly time is going by. But when you use your time, you realize how much time you actually got. That's true. You yeah, know? okay, so, yeah. You know, when you're in the funk, you just got to figure it out. You have to look at it from a third person and tell your ass to get up sometimes. Yeah. You know, like, you know, snap out of it. You know, it ain't that bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's like, 
um, what you had said as well about the change, just like a final note. Mm-hmm. We are creators. The, our whole like process is about change, yeah. changing a thing, transforming. Exactly. Yeah, everything is in any way that you create, whether it's crafting, whether it's painting, whether it's um, putting pen on paper, mm-hmm. whether it's writing music or making music or, or whatever have you, um, exercising as well because it, it can be a mm-hmm. form of art. It's all about change. It something is. has to be broken down. Something has to be done differently, and you should really love it. Adapt and overcome. Evolution is the way of life. Yeah. You know, it's just the way it is. Yeah, everything on this it's planet. It's just the way it is. So if you've ever find yourself My stuck, <laughs> if you ever find yourself in a rut, uh, you find yourself stuck. I'm not stuck yet. This is like really this has helped me as well. Mm-hmm. Um, just think about the things that you would change. Yeah. Yeah. Think about like, huh, what would I change if I could? Not if you could, because you will change it. Yeah. If you really care, if you are not just obsessed, but if you're passionate, obsession and passion to me are, are the same coin. Different yeah, sides of the same so, coin. Yeah. I mean, one is like shrouded in a darker light. But it doesn't mean that it's any less important. Yeah. Like, if you're obsessed about your work, you're passionate about it, you want to see it flourish, you want to see it do well. Obsession doesn't have to mean that you want to kick somebody else down to get better at it. That's not right. obsession. That's something else entirely. That's cruel. Yeah. But you should obsess over yourself, too. That's mm-hmm. an obsession you have in your art. You should care about yourself. Saying that, and Neff bringing up working out, Fine. <laughs> I'll do the P90X. I don't want to. He found the CD. The yeah, DVDs. The DVDs. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but yeah, it, it, it's really coming down to that. I mean, we get, I mean, a funk is no different than a depression. At the end of the day, you have a low point. You're like, okay, how do I get out of this? Yeah. You know, it, that's all it is. And, it, and it's inevitable. It's, I, I, it's I, always inevitable, time, yeah. I told myself, I'm never going to get in the funk again in the habit. Yeah, that was me um, a couple months ago. And it's like, now I just learned to accept the fact, okay, these are going to happen. Yeah. So, how do I deal with them once they get here? And isn't that the change you were talking about, too? Even if it's involuntary, that change is going to happen to you, you know? That doesn't mean that you run and hide and never accept it again. You just learn to adapt. Just find a new adapting measure. I just say a funk has often been, like, based around financial Oh, know, that's the story of our. Of time that's the yeah. story of our life. Yeah, Pretty so much. Like, you, really think, you really have to realize, okay, but that's just going to be a thing. So you might as well just deal with it and go on. You know, it's yeah. like, yeah. whatever, you know, sitting there worrying about it and, and freaking out about it isn't going to get the work done you need to uh, overcome it. I'll always say, give yourself that moment to feel it. Yeah. But if that moment becomes moments. You know, then you should probably, you don't want it to do that. Yeah. It gets harder. It gets harder to get out of when you allow that to be the case. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's like you're allowed to feel those feelings at the same time. You should also tell yourself how, you know, give yourself give yourself intention behind that as yeah. well. Intent. Just intent. You want to create? Have intention behind it. When you get out the rut? Have intention behind it. You want to feel sad? Feel sad. Tell yourself to feel sad for like an hour or two. Or Play just go to sleep. Song, cry your eyes out, wash them away, and fill your well with neon sweet. Ah, oh, beautiful. We should Is there seriously that a song like that? No, I just said that. That's one. beautiful. Oh. I like that. Hey. And you interrupted it. So. I did? I thought it was Spanish. <laughs> I thought it was Spanish. No, no he was, finished? yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was, that, that, I was joking. That, that was yeah, I was, oh, okay. I was joking. <laughs> that, yeah, that was off the top of my head, you know? Yeah, gorgeous. Uh, Yeah, so... I guess that's it for <laughs> this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like we said it. it all. Uh, yeah, for the most part, for for me, like I said, um, artist dates, filling up that well of inspiration, ways to fill up that wells of, wells well of inspiration, going out, talking to people, um, diving into like a new uh, uh, book. Yeah, um, escaping your mind for comic. a bit sometimes. Yeah, going just going out, just like. Letting yourself be at ease. Meeting He's creatives. He's going the distance. <laughs> He's going for speed. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, without further ado, you know, I hope thank you, guys, you for... Yeah. For listening. I'm sorry. Yeah. For yeah, listening. Sorry. For tuning in with us. I uh, hope your, you guys uh, get something from us. Lovable local uh, artist, writer, and, you know, director. Filmmaker, director. I keep forgetting. Uh, crew. It's me. It's him. Yeah, it's us. Um... Feel free to message us. I, I'm always happy to no, help. Don't message me. 
Oh, well, feel free <laughs> if you want to know more about the artist way. Feel, feel free to message. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And message. We just had a whole <laughs> hour and a half covers hour and a half, right? Yeah. Conversation okay. about. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, message my wife. If y'all feel <laughs> Sorry, privy to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always. We're, we are like, always. I happy really to just help. said. Like okay, don't message me when don't message me or NBC when those fall talk BS. You can message midnight and talk about the weather. <laughs> I, I'm talking about the weather, the artist way. I don't know anything about the artist way. He's been trying to get me hip on it, but I felt I didn't like the part where I have to write every day. Yeah, I don't like my brain sometimes. I mean, you just you, know, you just say what it is. You know, that is one whatever. Thing. It becomes easier. I can tell you, yeah. like before when it started, it probably took like a good forty five minutes to fill those three pages up. But like how it is now is literally like it takes no more than fifteen minutes for me. Nice. Uh it definitely helped me focus and whatnot. I mean that's and just good. get into it like a mindset. And it's like the only time I can write in cursive too. And I feel like that definitely taps into like that artistic part of my brain. I do yeah. like cursive. Yeah. I like cursive too. But, well. <laughs> But thanks, uh, everyone, for listening, and till next time. Kanye said. What did he say? What? what? <laughs> he said, uh, sophisticated, I write my curse words in cursive. Are you happy? Yeah. Are you content? Mm-hmm. I love you. Peace. Peace. This is making feet stink. Peace. <laughs> I thought you pressed the button already. <laughs>